Good morning, the boxing world. This is Derek Poppy Rollo at Strictly Boxing. Today, I got some things on my mind I want to talk about. And it's uh, some very serious information that I want to talk about and share. And about it's about the safety of boxing and the athletes and the fairness of the competitive fights that we're looking to see and that our fans want to see. How we can make the sport more safer and more fair between fighters where these advantages that they have and uh, won't get being lopsided and, and, and people won't have the upper hand, you know. Um, before I get started, man, I want to give a big shout out to my man Rajan Pittman, uh, champions. Uh, my brother Rajan, he got a real nice podcast. Look him up, man. He's real sharp, man. He's real knowledgeable about a lot of things. I like to give a big shout out to him, man. I like to thank all my subscribers, man. I know I just started, but um, subscribers are coming in very fairly fast, and I'm, and I'm appreciating that, man. So if you like the video, if you if you're watching the video, like the video, share the video, and make sure you subscribe, man. I really appreciate it, man. So today's topic, man, I want to talk about is the is the weigh-in procedures, man, in boxing. You know. Um, it's a lot different from when I was fighting, man. I mean, I, it changed along while I was still fighting. So I had some experiences with both parts of the weigh-in procedures. I mean, I turned professional in 87. At that time, man, at the end of 87, we were um, we were having same-day weigh-ins, man. And, and, and it was good, man. Um, and, and, and you wake up in the morning, if you go to sleep between... Uh, I, I was fighting, I turned pro at 147, so... If I go to sleep at 149, you know, you usually you know you you usually lose about a pound and a half to two pounds just sleeping. So so I had a nice procedure. I had a real good procedure, man, you know, before the night before every fight, no matter where I fought at, man, we didn't have cell phones where we could look up stuff right away, man. I used to wherever I go, no matter where I was fighting at, man, my first thing I would do is to get me a yellow pages, man, and find me a masseuse because the night before every fight, I got a full body massage to help me sleep better. But, you know, I always did like five minutes in the whirlpool, five minutes in the sauna, five minutes in the steam room, full body massage, and a good night's sleep. That was my procedures, you know. So if I went to sleep at 148, 148 and a half, 149, I wake up you know, normally at, at 147. So when the time you weigh in, you 147. And then, you know, you know, you can eat and gain up. Maybe for 147, you probably be like 155 around fight time, you know. And and that's about what people put on, man, between extra 10 pounds, 12 pounds at the most, man, extra 12 pounds. So you know, y'all y'all on the same level, man. And then um, they came up with another procedure. I'll tell you why they they changed it, though. Like, the reason why they came up with the, the weigh-ins before, the day before the fight, was because a lot of people, you know, like I was talking about on my last show when I talked about fighters being capped. Can't fights being canceled or something happening in the fighters being canceled, and that causes the, uh, the you know, you got TV, you got networks, and it causes a whole lot of confusion with fights being canceled, man. And this is another another part of that show because because if fights being canceled, somebody don't make weight, and now if they don't make weight, what are we going to do? If you don't got enough time to get a replacement or, or have something like that, there's a whole lot of stuff can go on. So, you know, since people will be coming in overweight and then fights getting canceled the day of the fight, we don't have enough time to put nobody in there to make no no no, no short minute notice fights. So somebody came up with a good, we thought it was a good idea. You come up with a good, good plan, you say, all right, well, we're weighing the day before, you know, and so... That way, the way in the day before, 3 o'clock normally was the way in time. So the day before, and so, but what that started happening is now you start finding people that can weigh in the day before so you can do things to your body and, and lose a lot of weight. And then the day of the fight, you know, you can put all that weight back on. So, like, I could be fighting 47 and then fighting somebody that's, 65, you know, and, and if you're 
a regular welterweight that's 47, like I said, you pick up maybe 10 pounds, you know. So you comes in the ring at 57 and you're fighting somebody that's 170, like, that's a big disadvantage in boxing, you know. And now, you know, um, with all these supplements and, and, and uh, performance enhancement drugs, you know, legal and illegal, uh, uh, it, it creates a whole lot of things that can have the body where the body could, could actually um, lose a whole lot of weight and then rehydrate all on. Now, how is that fair to the fighters? Like, uh, okay, you take something that make you lose the weight or you do something to, to lose weight and get down to, 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 uh, let's, let's, let's use, uh, Devin Haney for, for example, they say his last fight against, uh, we just progress. And he, he did a very good job. He looked very good. But he looked like he was fighting a, a much smaller opponent, uh, a much weaker opponent. And, and so they said that the day of the fight, he came in at 165. So how do you rehydrate, you know, all the way from 140 to one? That's 25 pounds. See, but now that's, 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 that's some... That's some stuff that we should be looking into because it doesn't seem fair. Uh, the one fighter, he's a 140 pounder. He might rehydrate up to 148, 150, but the guy he's fighting is 165. That's not fair to me, man. I think they should go back to the same day weigh-ins. And maybe what we should do in case of the cancer, the overweight fighters, is I think it's very disrespectful um, to the game of boxing if a fighter coming in overweight and can't make the weight, then 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 that's 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 he should be fined and a whole lot of stuff, you know, maybe banned or something, man, lose his license or something. I don't know, man. You don't make a weight, you cause a lot of problems in the game, man, you know. So so now uh we're talking about what should we do? Go back the same day weigh ins where um fighters could could, could manage the things, you know. Uh, people can manage their weight and, and and come along to be to be to get make it make it a fair fight, man, for everybody, man. Some people are in the weight class, that's what they is. They want middle middleweights. They they a middleweight fighter, so they ain't middleweights and they like heavies. You know what I mean? That's that's a big big advantage, man. And it's a it's it's going to hurt the sport of boxing, in my opinion, man, because it just, it just doesn't seem fair, man. And when you got this thing going back and forth with Devin Haney and 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 uh, Javante Davis, man, um, and Javante is right, man. Like he's a one thirty five pounder, man. He's probably going to come in at one forty, one forty three or something like that. And Devin Haney is going to come in at sixty, maybe one seventy. Like how can that be a fair fight? You know, a good strong, a good big man beats a good small man any time of the day, man. Like. And that might not be the case in that fight, but still, I still think it's a disadvantage. And boxing needs to look into that and do something about that because it's not fair to the fighters. It's not safe for the fighters as well. You know, and like I said, with these performance enhancement drugs, now there's things you could take to lose the weight, and it's then things you can take to put back on the weight. So now, like, what, why, why have weight classes then? You know what I mean? I mean, I saw somebody mention something the other day about, well, heavyweights can't be, no, ain't no weight limit with heavyweights. What's the difference? There's a big difference, man. You know, at a certain point, it doesn't matter, or it matters less. You know, real big five people were talking about Deontay Wilder against uh, Tyson Fury, and that was a big, big weight difference. And, and it showed the big weight difference. But over 200 pounds is less relevant, man, because a 200 pounder can punch just as hard as anybody. You know, once you're 200 and something pounds, you, you can punch harder than anybody. Now, the height and, and the bigness, you know, it's, you know, we can't do nothing about it. There's no limit in heavyweights. It ain't no super heavyweight um, bouts, weight limits. Like um, the amateurs used to have a super heavyweight. I think we still have a super heavyweight in the amateurs, but. There's no super super heavies in in uh, the professionals, so it doesn't it does it doesn't apply. But for these other weight classes, man, when you when you twenty pounds, fifteen, twenty pounds, twenty five pounds heavier than your opponent, man, that's a big advantage you have. And uh, it's not safe, man. It's not safe for the sport of boxing, 
if you got uh, people that could, could could do things to their body or take some some things and and able to drop twenty five pounds and then then put it back on like it's it's a uh, it's it's a disadvantage man it's not good I mean the same day way in they helped me out I mean the, the, the day before way in helped me out one time I get a phone call one time short notice fight of Tuesday night fights. I'm going to be the headlining of the last fight in the Boston Garden. I'm fighting Kevin Pompey, 10-round fight. I'm 170 pounds at the moment. Uh, when they called, it was on Saturday night. We, you know, I got to be in Boston on Monday at the weigh-ins, and um, Tuesday night was the fight. So, you know, I threw a plastic bag on. I shot to a 24-hour um, um, gym in, 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 in New Jersey and Broadway. It was a 24-hour gym. I went there. Put plastic bag on, put five, ran five miles on the treadmill, dropped the way we were home, took a shot, went to sleep, flew out to Boston the next morning, jumped on the scale, you know, and I dropped 10 pounds that fast. I was, I was, I was 170 when I got the call and I weighed in Monday at 160. But by the time Tuesday come, I'm back up to 170 again. So I'm back walking around at 170. But that's okay to some people. But what about the things they got going on now where, I could have, I could, I could have been 180, 190. That's a big disadvantage, man. You know, man. I got the win. It was a you know tough ten round fight with me and Kevin Pompey. Um, he was a good fighter out of Albany, New York. I had, I had beat him in the amateurs, and so we had a, a rematch as a professional, and I got the ten round unanimous decision. It was a good fight. I caught it on short notice. I, dropped, I was 10 pounds overweight. I was able to drop 10 pounds. But I wouldn't have been able to do that if the weigh-in was the same day. Because I, I, I wouldn't have been able to maintain it or eat anything the day before. I wouldn't have been strong enough. I would have been weak the day of, then trying to build, eat back on and put the weight back on. You can't do it. So there's something that needs to be done, man, to, 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 uh, to really... Um, Protect our fighters, man. We got to protect our fighters. Which, you know, I remember T Tank Davis said something about, um, you know, fighting Devin Haney if Devin Haney uh, agrees to a, a, a rehydrate, rehydration clause. And, of course, Devin Haney said no. But it, for those of you who don't know what a rehyd rehydration clause is, that means that, that you make the weight at the 140 or 135, or whatever they fight at. And then the day of the fight, you can't weigh more than 150 or something like that. And 155, I think it's like a 15% of your weight or something that you can only gain. It's a percentage weight part. And so then if if you do, you know, you, you lose the fight or you forfeit the fight or, or however that go, but you got to abide by the contract. You know, but like I said, everything is, is hard to, to to figure this out because so much is involved with boxing matches being made, and now you got people like, well, what, 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 what will we do if a big fight is supposed to happen and one fight don't make the weight the day of the fight or even the day before the fight? You know, even that's difficult to find somebody to replace them in one day. But we're able to do that sometimes. I mean, we're able to make some phone calls. I think we got to, we should have some stand up, standbys, have backup fights, man, like uh, <laughs> substitutes or something, man, like a backup quarterback or something, man. Because, you know, the fight's got to go on. You know, tickets is being sold, TVs is being bought, everything is expected to go. And if these fighters don't make weight, man, they, they, they need to be, be punished for that right there, man. That's a big, big. Thing, very disrespectful, man, to the sport of boxing, to the game. If you're not going to make weight, man, you can't, you're not that disciplined to yourself to make the weight that you're supposed to make, you know. And then you get, you know, fighters that come over with, well, they ain't going to cancel the fight, so they're going to let me fight over. Like a couple times I had to deal with that. When a guy come in six pounds, seven pounds overweight, man, and then we got to fight him anyway. You know, they, they give us a little extra money or whatever for, for fighting him anyway, but phew, that's dangerous just because you make a couple extra dollars they give you. You know, you you uh you may may, may wind up 
getting hurt or something, fighting somebody 10 pounds, 15 pounds overweight, man, you know? I mean, I had a fight in Atlantic City against Lewis Howard, man. Lewis Howard was a very experienced welterweight, man. This was a big quantum leap for me, man, you know? He came in six pounds overweight, man. I don't know, I'm like 15 to one underdog, and he comes in six pounds overweight, man, and... and uh, of course, we fought him anyway, man. Yo, I beat him. My manager told me something like, if he's overweight, that, that means he uh, he ain't in shape. So that was that case. But that doesn't necessarily have to be, be the case in all fights. So I'm talking about what we going to do about this sport, man. You know, what we going to do about fighters that, that you know, disrespect the, the, the rules, you know, disrespect the weight game. And now they, they call it weight bullying now. I want them to get me in the edge. So I'm going to drop this weight the day before. Then I'm going to eat this or drink this to, to, to lose the weight or eat this and that to gain my weight back. And I got, sometimes you got almost 40 hours to pick your weight back up before you go into the ring, man. So you could actually come down to 140 because they said Devin Haney was 165 pounds. Now, that's more. That's more than what Crawford was when he fought Spence going in the ring. Or close to it around there. I don't know if it was more or exact or around that. That's what, you know, they fought at after the, after the weigh-in. That's what they weighed. So that's, that's, he's not a 140-pounder. He's not a lightweight pounder. He's a heavy dude, man. He fight, he weighing 165. That's not even a welterweight, that's not even middleweight, that's like super middleweight. He was a super middleweight fighting a 140 pounder, was fighting a super lightweight. He got the advantage. The one thing could knock him down and hit him, he, he, he weighed 25 pounds on him. Maybe 20 pounds, because if Regis went up extra five, maybe seven, eight pounds, something like that. But I'm telling you, something gotta be done about this, man. I would love to know your comments about this topic, man. Uh, it's it's been bothering me, man, since these fights, man. And I'm seeing how these these uh people with the PEDs, man, they they coming in, they taking things, they can make their weight whatever they want, they do what they want to do. Like there's a whole lot of stuff going on. This ain't a fair sport anymore to me, man. I love the game, man. I've been doing it since I was a little kid, but to see somebody be able to to get a big advantage, man, because now we got day before wins and now they're starting to have it like instead of having it the day before during the evening or, or, or something they have it the day before in the afternoon so now you're getting 12 o'clock one o'clock wins the day before so that gives you a whole 24 plus another 12 or some hours before you're going in the ring to pick that weight back up and rehydrate your body back i, I don't think it's fair i would love to hear you what you got to say about it I would love to hear what you got to say about the rehydration clause and the weight clause in boxing. Let me know. Like the video, share the video, but please, please, can you please comment and let me know how you feel about this topic. This is Derek Poppy Roland at Strictly Boxing. Peace.